where he had been brought up. Now listen to this. He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. And verse 18 of Luke 4 says this. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, and recovering of the sight of the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And He closed the book and He gave it again to the minister and sat down and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on Him. And He began to say unto them, This day is the Scripture fulfilled in your ears. What is Jesus saying? He is saying to them that I am that preacher. I am that prophet. I am the one that has been sent. And He said in verse 18, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. I just want to bring this out because uh, the Spirit of God was poured upon Jesus. The oil was poured upon the fine flour. May we never forget that Jesus Christ lived in this flesh uh, anointed uh, and poured on upon uh, the Holy Ghost of God. Not only was he poured, uh, but uh, the Bible says uh, uh, that he was mingled uh, as well. You see, when you look at this uh, sacrifice, uh, this offering uh, in Leviticus chapter number 2, you're going to find that it was poured. But not only that, it was penetrated. It was mingled with. Remember what the angel told Mary? I like this. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. The Holy Ghost was on him. The Holy Ghost was in him. And now begin to think about this. His whole nature and his entire life, Jesus was just not anointed of God. But the Holy Ghost penetrated every thought, every word, and every deed. The Lord Jesus Christ was mingled with all. He had all poured on Him, and He was mingled with Him. Aren't you thankful for the perfection of the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ? And so we see the fine flower. We see the oil. But now notice, if you will, uh, these green ears of corn. Notice what the Bible says in verse number 14. And if thou offer a meat offering of thy first fruits unto the Lord, thou shalt offer for the meat offering of thy first fruit green ears of corn dried by the fire, even corn beaten out of full ears. Now this is interesting uh, as we look at this uh, uh, meat offering that they could bring of the green ears of corn. That idea of green gives us the idea of being tender. That he was tender. And then when we come to the next part, it's dried by fire. This green ears of corn were dried up from the heat of fire. And then this corn was then beaten out of full ears. I just want to stop in this study and I want us to be reminded. I'm going to give you a second as you turn to the book of Isaiah chapter 53. A chapter that is much quoted but very seldom read. It's much used uh, but very seldom applied. I want to give you Isaiah chapter 53 as we think of these green ears of corn that were dried by the fire and beaten out of full ears. Let's read as we think about what Jesus did for us. Let me just remind you that Jesus Christ uh, fulfilled all uh, uh, to the satisfaction of God. Uh, he is our propitiation. He has appeased God. He has pleased God. Uh, and He went through everything for you and me. Uh, we, we are living in a day where people do not fully understand or appreciate uh, what Jesus did on Calvary's cross, His life uh, and His death here for you and me. But let me just remind you that we see in the meat offering uh, how that Jesus Christ fulfilled uh, through the suffering and the beating uh, and the torment what Jesus went through for you and me is found in Isaiah 53. The Bible says this in verse 1. Now read it with me. Who hath believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? 
For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. What, what about that green plant? That tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon Him. And with His stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray and we have turned everyone to His own way. And the Lord hath laid on Him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed. He was afflicted. Yet He opened not His mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shears is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. Uh, and who shall declare his generation? For he was uh, cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he, was, and he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because he done no violence, neither was any deceit found in his mouth. Watch this now. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. It pleased the Lord to bruise him. And he hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare, he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Jesus Christ uh, uh, is the meat offering. He has uh, went through this beat. He has went through this fire. He has went through this process, uh, if you will, uh, so that God could be satisfied uh, with the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. I think we lose sight of that. I think sometimes we want to hear some preacher give us some great exhortation uh, and some great uh, uh, words and some great sermon that he's come up with uh, and we skip reading the Bible. If you notice in this study, we've got Bible after Bible after Bible. Why? Because the book of Leviticus uh, is foreshadowing uh, the great sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and the Lord Jesus Christ has fulfilled all the demands uh, through the meat offering. Jesus became the bread of life. And he was crushed by the very hand of God. I begin thinking about how that he talked about uh, that uh, this uh, offering could go through the oven. You remember he talked about that it could go through the oven and it could go through the pans. We, we, we read that and looked at that a little earlier. That Jesus Christ went through the, the very oven of God, the very fire of God. Uh, I know that, and you understand this, that there is a intimacy about an oven. There is a, a dark place about an oven. There is a hidden, hidden place about the oven. I just like to see this uh, as I look at this offering in Leviticus 2. As when God the Father and God the Son there on the cross of Calvary and Jesus is put into the oven of the judgment of God. Aren't you thankful that Jesus Christ was perfect enough, that Jesus was the perfect sacrifice uh, that God would accept His offering uh, and in accepting His offering, He's accepted you and me uh, as children of God. That ought to make us all excited uh, for what Jesus did as the meat offering. Boy, when I begin to think about this, uh, just as the Israelites brought different meat offerings, just as they brought the different meat offerings, we can lean on Jesus as the meat offering. I don't know. I just got to thinking about this. Uh, one uh, could have brought, you know, they could have brought the different offerings. They, he told them, you know, if one bring this one uh, or if this uh, oblation is this, uh, you know, and he went down the list of that. I just got to thinking that maybe one came uh, and brought a green ear. 
Maybe he brought a tender plant. Maybe he brought that green ear as an offering because he wanted to lean on God's grace and God's mercy. Maybe one brought uh, him the ear dried by fire. I don't know. Maybe he brought it uh, that it was beaten out trying uh, to endure what he was going through in the world uh, as the world was in opposition. Uh, one may have brought uh, them uh, uh, a, a bacon in that oven as he come to lean upon him uh, uh, because uh, he was trying to lean on him uh, as the suffering one because I know there are times uh, where we need to lean on the Lord Jesus and know that we know that He is the perfect sacrifice. Uh, there's nothing left for me. There's nothing I can do to get to heaven. I must trust uh, in the finished work of Calvary. I'm glad to know that we can lean on the Lord Jesus uh, as uh, this green ear of corn uh, that was dried by fire and beaten down. Uh, I'm glad to know that Jesus has fulfilled this part of the meat offering. Well, let me hurry. He said, I want you to use fine flour and oil. You can bring a green ear of corn dried by fire and beaten out of full ears. But also I want you to bring the frankincense. This frankincense uh, in uh, verse number one, uh, put frankincense there on, he said. Verse number two, with all the frankincense thereof. Frankincense was just a spice uh, used uh, for in increasing and extending the aroma of even other spices. It was a white uh, 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 spice. It, it, it had a whiteness to it, which represented purity. I, I thought that was interesting in studying this, that over the top of the meat offering, uh, uh, frankincense was added uh, uh, over the top of it. That is how it's seen. If you look down on it, it's seen in its uh, purity. You see, when we think about this, uh, to apply this frankincense, you remember that uh, this incense is a type of prayer in the Bible. Psalm 141 verse 1, Lord, I cry unto thee, make haste unto me. Give ear unto my voice when I cry unto thee. Let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense. And the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Revelation 8 uh, verses 3 and 4 talks about that. We, we're, we're looking at this frankincense that when this meat offering was offered up to God, that this smell went to God and it was uh, satisfying to Him. And so there was frankincense to be put over the top of the meat offering. But then He said, there's a few things I do not want. I want no leaven. He did not want leaven. You remember that as we read? And then he did not want honey. You remember that leaven is a, a representation of evil or sin. It was left out of the meat off. Even when it was allowed later on, it was a picture of the sinfulness of man uh, and how that uh, we stand in need of God. But this leaven was to be left out. Uh, it, it, it was to be, this offering was to be the righteousness uh, uh, in that offering. There was to be no leaven in it. And the honey, this was interesting when we looked at this because this ingredient is sweet. No doubt it's a sweet ingredient, but it also ferment and corrupt very quickly and then it becomes sour. And God said, do not put any leaven or any honey in it. But he said this, I want you to make sure that you always put salt in it. Isn't that amazing uh, that the chief feature of this ingredient is incorruptibility? It is incorruptible. It is a preservant. Uh, it will preserve from corruption. I, I don't have time to get into all of that, but you know as well as I do that Jesus Christ uh, is the incorruptible seed. Aren't you glad uh, that we don't have to worry about this sacrifice ever running out uh, or ever having any issues uh, with God on our behalf? Jesus is uh, incorruptible. And so we see the ingredients. We see the identification. But let me just uh, notice, if you will, uh, here at the end, uh, I want to call your attention because it's very interesting. Uh, in uh, chapter number one or chapter number two, uh, and as you read this in verse number two, he told them, and the priest shall burn the memorial of it. The memorial of it. Isn't that interesting uh, that this offering uh, uh, was to have a memorial in it. As our time comes down, let me just remind you that I really feel in our day and time that people are forgetting to remember 
what Jesus did for us. And people are all time trying to, uh, uh, to talk about what they do for Jesus. People are all time trying to talk about what they've done for Jesus. You know, here's what I did for the Lord. I, look what I'm doing for the Lord. I, I'm just reminding you that we are reminded uh, that we are to remember what the Lord did for us uh, on uh, every occasion. Uh, we are to be reminded uh, that we are to remember His death uh, as He said to, uh, uh, to us that we are to remember His death till He come. This do in remembrance of me. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Uh, you remember that? He said that on several occasions. Uh, the very essence of that uh, supper is to remember the, the body that was broken and the blood that was shed. And, and we live in a time to where we're always talking about what we're doing for Jesus. Uh, could we ever get back to talking about what Jesus did for us? Uh, he's the fine flower that was poured on top of by the oil. Uh, he has got the purity of the frankincense. Uh, he is that corn that was green, that was dried by fire uh, and beaten down. Uh, he is the perfection uh, of perfection. Uh, and could we just always remember that and quit trying to live our lives as if uh, we are doing something for the Lord. Uh, we need to remember what the Lord did for us long before we talk about what we do for the Lord. You see, when you come to this, uh, all through the New Testament, we are told uh, to be reminded. We're going to be put in remembrance. In remembrance. Boy, I thought about what uh, Simon Peter said uh, he said, I would not be negligent, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 12, to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them, and be established in the present truth. Well, the meat offering. We need to remember Jesus and what he did for us on Calvary's cross. He's perfect. He's perfect. And the cross of Calvary where Jesus died uh, when Jesus died, uh, when the blood of Christ was shed, uh, God was appeased and God was satisfied. The meat offering.